Hello, Sam here. I thought I'd jump on here today and do a video in regards to OCD and confession. How they go hand in hand and talk a bit about my journey with it. So I used to confess every day and I'd say that. I genuinely used to confess every day, whether that be every fucking morning, every night, uh, as soon as I got in from work, my poor fiance used to hear it all. Every event, every thought. Okay, whether that be an event from 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, um, whether that be when I was driving home 10 minutes ago or, or yesterday, anything. Whether it be a thought at an unwanted time, I'd have to confess, I'd have to vent, I'd have to see what they think of it, I had to get their reassurance. Is this normal? Is that normal? Going down that rabbit hole every day and thinking that confession would work. Thinking that confession holds the key to peace. Now, the reason I stuck with confession for so long is because, A, I felt like I was keeping some evil, dark secret and I had to get it all off my chest. And B, when I first confessed and sort of speaking about my thoughts and events from the past, uh, false memories from the past, thing that was keeping me stuck and, and locked up in the chronic guilt cycle, I felt an overwhelming sense of relief. So I thought that was the way forward. Wow, how wrong was I? <laughs> so with OCD, you've got to remember, it is such a fine line. Okay, so you could be thinking, all right, um, I want to sort of get this off my chest. Um, I want to speak about how I'm feeling. Um, I want to get someone's advice. Then all of a sudden you're down the confession, you're down the venting, you're down the complaining cycle. It is such a fine line. So you've got to be wary of that. And you've got to remember the urge to confess is going to feel absolutely overpowering at times. It's going to feel completely automatic and you've got no choice and you're going to have to. That, that's how it's going to feel. Okay, It's going to completely convince that you need to confess, um, that it's real, that you need to get off your chest and you feel like there's no other option. All right, it's very crafty like that. Now, what, what you've got to remember, when you do feel like that, you're compulsively searching for relief. You're, 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 ch you're, you're chasing for some rid of a feeling. Okay, so if I talk about me, I was locked up in a guilt cycle, chronic shame. So I felt like the, I had to get that guilt away, to get rid of that guilt feeling, I had to confess an event from the past. I had to confess the thoughts I was having. I was constantly looking for that key and I thought that key was in confession. Complete nonsense, I'm afraid. Got me nowhere. Dead end. Okay, caused more problems and just constantly confessing everything. People ain't got time for that. People ain't, my fiance didn't have time for just every night to tell him everything. Okay, it's that tough love approach that she, that she gave me, which is what I needed. Told me to shut up and sit, sit with it and get on with it. <laughs> Okay, so if I give some examples, so if you kept confessing every thought, is it weird to have this thought at this time? Do you have these kind of thoughts? Okay, at one point, I thought I had to sort of confess or, or tell some of my thoughts and then we can sit down and work out and talk it out. Complete nonsense. Okay, but that's how I felt. I felt like that was a way out. I felt like that was a, the chase for relief. That's what I needed. I thought that was the answer. One big thing for me, confession, real events and false memory in, in the past. Um, if you've watched my videos, I, that, that's been my main theme of false memories, real event, PUCD, harm OCD. Um, so when I was driving, this happened. Or when I was 13, this happened. Or was I 14? Or was I 12? Or when we were having sex, I had this thought. Um, do you get these thoughts? Is this normal? Um, should I should I tell someone? Should I should I do something about this? I can't possibly sit with this and constantly confess it. Or oh, I did this one this, or I did that then, or, or today um, I held a knife in the kitchen today and I had this thought: um, Is this normal? Or just having the, the urge to tell someone that you couldn't sit with that. Okay, I was in that confession loop all the time. And then what would happen was, so after I confessed, it would go ah. But you haven't confessed that properly, or you missed a bit, or you haven't explained it to the nth degree and to the exact detail. So you've got to go back and confess the event all over again and completely waste whoever you're talking to's time. <laughs> that's how it can be. And that's how craft it will be. Okay, if you didn't say a word properly, or or, or didn't, didn't feel like you didn't quite, or they didn't quite understand what you meant, you're gonna to have to go back and confess it and, and tell it all again. Wow, so much time wasted I, I did doing that. And then it would latch to, 
oh shit, I've confessed now. What do they think about me? Are they going to tell all their friends and all the family or, or like this or, or about what I've confessed and everyone's going to then hate me and reject me and just going down that rabbit hole? So I then seek reassurance about what I've confessed. Just that continuous loop, that continuous never-ending cycle of confession, reassurance, um, venting, and just go, you're going around, you're not actually getting anywhere. You, you look, you're, you're chasing for that key, which you're never going to get with confession. Now, my confession got so bad um, that I, I, was temp I was that close to handing myself in to the police and confessing everything, events in the past, thoughts. It got that close, and that's how OCD can be. That's how serious it, it can get. All right. So once, if we don't know how OCD operates and how it li li how it latches onto that confession cycle, we, we it can get that bad. Because I felt that I couldn't possibly live with myself, that I had to be punished, and that I was undeserving, and that I I, I couldn't function with this event in the past or with these thoughts that I was having, that I had to just get off my chest and go to jail for 20, 30 years. And, and then that's, that'd, be my, that'd be my way of relief. That'd be the how I'd find peace doing that. That'd be my way out, way out of this, the, the chronic guilt cycle, okay? That is before I knew how OCD operated, and I thought that was the best way forward. Now looking back, it's like, wow, fucking hell, that's crazy. But that's how it was. That, that is genuinely what I felt. Crazy stuff, okay? Now, what we've got to remember is, when it comes to confession, there's no universal law that you must confess anything, okay? No one has to confess anything. There's obvious reasons why people do and why people want people to confess, obvious reasons. But at the end of the day, there's not a universal law and no one has to confess, okay? No matter what you've done, no matter what you may think you've done, no matter what OCD is telling you you've done, no one has to confess anything, you don't explode if you don't confess. I remember feeling like that. I felt like, right, if I don't confess all this now, I'm going to explode and I can't function. Yes, I was anxious as fuck. Yes, I was, go I was going to constant panic attacks. Yes, I felt chronically guilty. Yes, the shame was, was ramped up so high um, and constantly thinking, if only they knew this and if they knew that and I'm undeserving of this and I can't enjoy anything and I can't be let off the hook. I can't have a minute's peace. Yes, I felt all that. Okay, but I, I could. St I'm still alive. I don't just. I don't just disappear if I don't confess. This is what I mean by sitting with those feelings and, and living your life regardless. Okay, so with OCD, you're going to feel the need to confess absolutely everything and get it all off your chest. Okay, it's going to feel like you're keeping a dark, evil secret in the past, that, it, that you're a terrible, awful human being, and that if you don't confess now, that's it. Um, everyone's going to find out anyway, um, and they're all going to hate you, and, and blah, blah, blah. That, that, that rabbit hole cycle you go down. Now, it usually comes down to the fear of rejection, especially with me, with the guilt-related themes, constant fear of rejection. So if they reject me, at least I can go in and say, oh, look, this happened or this happened, and I can sort of turn, uh, honestly, complete mental, the, the, the route I went down with confession, that, that you can't possibly live with yourself. And like I said, it's, it links into the only thing new aspect. I remember going out all the time out with my friends. I'll give you some examples with me. So let's be going out with my mates down the pub. And just constantly thinking, if only they knew this, only if they knew that from 10, 15 years ago. Only if they knew when I was driving home today that I nearly ate that person or a bit close to that cyclist. Or only if they knew I was having sex. I had this thought, um, I'll be at a football match or a music event and, and constantly thinking, only if they knew this or only if the, the artist knew this. And honestly, crazy stuff. And that's why I felt like I had to confess everything, get all off my chest because I felt like I couldn't sit with it. And I've already touched on this. But those feelings of undeserving and um, that you can't be let off the hook, not a second's piece. When you're struggling with confession, when you're struggling with real event, false memories today, you're going to know exactly what I mean. When nothing else matters in life because it is one thing in the past, that's how real it's going to feel. Um, and and we, you can get through it, okay? I can't highlight enough that confession isn't going to get you anywhere. All right, if I like, I'd like to meet someone who recovered by confession, see what they look like, see what they sound like, see what, <laughs> to see what they look like, because that is just not going to happen, they're not going to exist, okay, um, I was stuck in the confession cycle for many, many years, 
lots and lots of time wasted. And I could look back now and beat myself up and go, fuck's sake, Sam, why did you spend that much time in confession? Why didn't you look into your beliefs? Why didn't you actually read the books on the reading list? Why didn't you do exposures rather you spent the whole time in confession? Okay, but what I've learned and what I've experienced from that very tough journey where every night I was confession has got to me where I am today. Those tools that I've learned to overcome that has empowered my life today. So there is much, much hope for getting better. You don't have to stay in that confession cycle. I know exactly how you feel. Um, just remember, when that urge to confess does come, it isn't going to get you anywhere. Urge is going to move the goalposts. It's going to move the boundaries. It's going to find something else. It's going to hit you with a different angle. And it's going to try and keep it latched. It's not going to get you... You're not going to get anywhere with confession. You need to work on those beliefs. You need to change your perspectives. Isn't, you don't just do something. It, it's a gradual perspective shift over time. Um, writing down your fears and breaking them down. What is so scary about this? What is so scary about that? Like I've said, with confession, it's usually the, the fear of rejection um, and the fear of anything new, especially with my, my specific themes. All right. I hope the video has helped. If it has, please leave a comment. I would much appreciate that. Um, please leave a like if you have enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any more... Uh, suggestions you'd like me to do um, with confession, real event, false memory OCD, POCD, harm OCD, ha uh, hit and run OCD, any guilt related theme, any anything you'd like me to explain or go into some more detail, please leave a comment and I'd be more than happy to. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so, that would be much appreciated. Anyway, you take care, you will get there and have a lovely day. Bye bye.